Hi everyone, if you struggle reading music in choir, this tutorial is for you. It's a very short tutorial to step you through the basic elements in a score so when you sit in choir, you don't feel confused. Okay, to get us started, I have pulled my arrangement that I bought last year for my choir, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, which is a fun, groovy 70s number. I chose it because my group I have is a middle school choir and I like to expose them to different types of styles and retro songs as well. So your first page that you will get will just have the title, it will have nothing else on it, it will have the composer and information about the arrangement. We're going to turn to the first page which sometimes confuses people because usually on these scores page two is actually the first page. On the score you will have your title, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing, and underneath it says for SSA voices accompanied. Okay, so just to talk about this, if you are not familiar with this, SSA means soprano, soprano, alto, or soprano second alto, alto. That is for a, usually a female choir. You can also have arrangements which are SA, soprano, alto. You can have TB, tenor bass. You can have ST, SATB, which means soprano, alto, tenor bass as well. So this one here says that I have an SSA. So that tells me that I have three different parts happening in this score. I have a soprano, a second soprano, and an alto. So when I look further down, we will find that I will have those parts in there. I'll be looking for three different parts. Hopefully in your choir, you know what part you've been designated to. If you're not sure, ask your choir director. They'll definitely have an idea about where they'll put you. Keep your mind open, people. I was an alto my whole life, and I got put into soprano and could sing it, so that's cool. You'll have your arranger over here, Paul Langford, and you'll have the, the original composer and lyricist over here on the right. So you've got title, arranger, composer. Cool. Now, don't be freaked out by all the notes. We'll go through it slowly. This little staff connection bracket with the words a comp means accompaniment. That is what is accompanying the singing. Okay, and in this in this song, it is piano. And we know that because the accompaniment is piano because it has this bracket connecting these two staves, which means that the piano right hand is this one and the, the left hand is this one. And they always travel together. So you'll travel across and then it goes back to here, kind of like when you're reading a book. And now, this is when it gets confusing and people are like, I have no idea where I'm looking. Because you'll see that here there's a different type of bracket from this one. So the piano part continues on the bracket down the bottom. And as you turn the pages, it continues to do so. Like that, okay? So that's what it is, sorry. Down here, okay? The new type of bracket that we see here is connecting the vocal parts. And you'll see underneath, the whole thing is connected by a bracket. So it connects the voice parts with the piano part with this one single line. The bracket here tells us that it's piano and the different type of bracket here tells us that it is voice parts. Here it says SOP1, SOP2, altos. So looking up here when we had the SSA, Soprano 1, Soprano 2, and Alto. If you're an Alto, you are following this line, the second one that's underneath, for the entire song. So you go from here, when we get up to this thing, you're following the second one, following the second one, you're following the second one, if you're an Alto. And this score reading exercise actually goes for any type of voice type that you are. It just helps you follow them. Usually the bass will be on the bottom, uh, tenor and bass, if it is an ST, SATB, the soprano alto will be on one line like this, and the tenor and bass will be on the second one, and etc. etc. Looking here, you've got soprano one and soprano two. Now this is where it gets confusing for a lot of people because they don't know what notes I'm following here. You'll notice that there's just one line of notes. There's no extra notes, there's no extra added notes underneath or above. So that means the soprano one and the soprano two parts are actually singing the same part here. You've got a cute talking. They're all singing that same line exactly how it's written. And if you actually look underneath, the alto line is doing the exact same thing. It's exact same notes. There's nothing different. Everyone's singing in what we call unison, and it's written here, unis, unison. 
It continues that way. I'm going to try and find us a little bit when we break up. When I'm looking at page four, here we go. Page 15 is when things get a little bit real. Altos follow. They know that they're following this line because it's underneath the soprano line. It's the second one. But you'll notice that now I have two different notes. The soprano ones, the top sopranos, will follow that top note here. And then the bottom sopranos, the second sopranos, will sing the second note. They do that because then they don't have to print lots and lots of sheet music and they can just condense it to one staff. Some arrangements might actually have a staff for the second, second sopranos, but not this one. They're condensing it to make it neater. So second sopranos, you will be following the, any note that goes underneath. And here you'll notice that the notes both have a stem down and a stem up, meaning that you're singing different notes, different notes, different notes, and then here you're actually singing the same notes. That's what it is indicating. So again, soprano ones follow the top, soprano twos follow the bottom, and then here you're seeing the same thing. To go through a few of the symbols, just so you're not confused, this part up here, swing 16th pop groove, is your tempo. The little note with the equal with 100 is your BPM, our beats per minute, and I have a separate video on that if you want to check that out, which tells you about that. This whole thing is a bar, and bars are split up by these long bars splitting them all up in half, right, like that. So that's one bar, that's two bar, three bar, four bar. So ask yourself, what bar does the singers come in on? They enter on bar five, and it's indicated with a little five in a box. The other things that you'll notice is you have clefs, so a treble clef and a bass clef. If you're in a singing in a female bar, you will typically only be singing with a treble clef in front, and if you're a male, you'll tend to be sometimes singing with a uh, bass clef, but not always. These little symbols here just indicate the key. You don't have to worry about that as a singer. The 4-4 four four indicates that we are in common time, so four beats per bar, so there'll be four beats in a bar. Don't worry, this is a bit rhythmical here, so you don't have to worry about that, just so you know. And these little D, B, M7, F sharp, M7 indicates the chords, okay? So if you have an accompanist that doesn't want to play what's written here, or you have a band that wants to play it, they are playing the chords there. Underneath is, as well, copying is illegal. If you are doing porous you should not be photocopying for your choir, you should buy enough arrangements so every single person has a, their own copy that they can make notes on. I usually ask my chorus to use pencil if they want to mark on their score and then we erase it at the end of the year. One thing that will also help for singing is we don't have buttons to press, we don't have notes that match exactly with that, unless you have perfect pitch and that's pretty rare. You can just follow the movement of the notes. So we know that here we're starting high because it's higher up on the stuff and we're going down, we're going up again and moving down. So knowing the motion and what direction you're going with the music really helps you as you're in a choir. You can also see when you're, for example, on this page, when you're singing uh, maybe the middle part, you can see how close you are singing to the other parts. And okay, so they're only two notes higher than me. So the pitch is not going to be too far away from what the soprano ones are singing if I'm a soprano too. Really helps to know the motion. So for example, here we're going up, then we go down again, and we go up again. Knowing the motion is so helpful for singers, and as you practice and be part of a choir, you become much better. And that's it from me, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Give me the thumbs up and have a great day. Happy singing. If you enjoyed this video and want access to more free warm-ups, meditations, and other singing-related videos, make sure you subscribe. I am a new channel and any support is appreciated so I can make more material for you guys. Anyway, that's it from me. See you next time.